Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, the rendering section. We're going to continue our talk, so let's just get started. Now, we're going to be talking about occlusion area and occlusion portal. Uh, the only problem is that I'm not sure how they work. I looked at the documentation and uh, I was able to, of course, read it, but I didn't know what they were mentioning. So here in the occlusion area, it says the occlusion area is it defines the view volumes in the occlusion call-in system and the view volumes are areas of the scene where the camera will be uh, likely to be at runtime so at bag time unity generates higher precision data within these view volumes at runtime unity performs higher precision calculations with the camera that is within the view volume so pretty much what they're saying is this occlusion area it, 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 it creates a view volume and this view volume is supposed to be in areas of the scene where the camera will most likely be at during runtime. So as you can see, all you have to do is, if you go back, all you have to do is, you know, you could adjust the size here, you know, to fit whatever area the camera is gonna be looking at. And then you could check it right here if it's gonna be a view volume or if it's not. And if, and if we go back, it just says right here, a view volume, if it's enabled, uh, this occlusion area is defined as a view volume. If not, it is not a view volume. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. And then if we go to occlusion portals, this also, I'm not sure how you can make it work. I was trying to make it work in the scene, but maybe it does it in the back end where we can't actually see it. Maybe it's just for performance, but it, it says right here, an occlusion portal can either be opened or closed. Uh, when it is closed, it occludes other objects game objects when it is open it does not occlude other game objects so it says if you have a game object in your scene that has an open and closed state such as a door you can create an occlusion portal that represents it in the occlusion cooling system you can then set the opening state of the occlusion portal according to the game or according to the state of the game object an occlusion portal component does not need to be placed on the game object it represents so right here shows a little script where you could turn it on and off so you just call open and you set it to true or false and if we go back over here uh, we could see if we remove this or just leave it there and add the portal we could open it and close it and the same thing as the occlusion area we could actually change the size of it let me just remove this and we could also edit but this is more like a collider so another one was like a collider too but it had like different handles but anyways sorry i wasn't able to figure this out if anybody knows what how these work please leave a comment below and then maybe i could figure it out and make a video after that but we'll just keep moving on reflection probe i have a video on that it was kind of low quality so if you guys want to see a remake of that video just let me know and then the skybox skybox for this to work you have to have it on your main camera so if we go to my game view take off the stats uh you could see the what sky material i have so if i add this component skybox and i go to the custom skybox i could add a skybox and this will override the lighting settings so it will override that so let me put the sunset and as you can see it override the, that setting and then you know i could say the default skybox and as you can see it overrides the setting and then you could turn it on and off so this might be a way for you guys to do a day and night system if you guys don't want to well for the day and night system you also would have to change the color and everything but it would also be great to change the sky so it won't look like a cloudy sky because even let's say i change the sky to be dark it still looks like it's real bright so usually that's how you would get like a dark a dark environment but like i said you would also have to have um a sky box that has like a night environment so it could shine the lights off because what it does is the material also sh uh, projects light so depending on what material it is it gives a different lighting effect so yeah, that would be one way to do that. And then uh, let's see what else there is. Okay, there's also sorting group. Now sorting group, the way this works is just like uh, order and layer. So if you checked out my video on the sprite renderer, it would be like that order and layer with the sorting layer. That's all it is. And for this to work, it has to be a sprite renderer. And this sorting group overrides uh, these additional settings right here. 
I'm not sure why they have this component, but pretty much if I, uh, let's say I, let me go to the scene view, go to do 2D mode, let me turn off this house, and let me add a sprite real quick. And we got this arrow sprite. Let me actually turn off the capsule too. Now we got this arrow sprite, and let me duplicate it, and I'm gonna add an emoji. And now, as you can see, the emoji is on top. But let's say I change this ordering layer, and as you can see, it does not affect it at all. So now I can change it with this. And since they both have um, sorting groups, both of the sorting groups are gonna override these additional settings. But let's say I remove this order or sorting group. So just remove it. And as you can see, it moved up to the front, even though it's they're both at zero. But now, let's say I have this at one or at 10. Now this will affect the sorting group. So that's just a way to override pretty much these sorting layers, sorting groups. And they also have the same exact drop down menu. So you could add sorting layers if you want to your sorting group. And uh, yeah, that's that for that. And then there's streaming control. Now streaming control, you also have to have it on your, on your camera. So if we go to the main camera, and we go to rendering streaming control. Streaming control, it has this mip map bias and mip maps, I'll get into more detail of a, what a mip map is, but it's pretty much a texture. When you import your textures, you could actually enable if you wanted to be a mip map or not. So let's see where this emoji is at right here. And if I have it here in our settings, we could generate mip maps. So we could actually generate it right here and then it will give us these settings. But pretty much what this controller does is, as you can see, it says when texture streaming is active, Unity loads mid map levels, levels for textures based on their distance from all active cameras. This bias is added to all textures visible from this camera and allows you to force smaller or larger mid map levels to be loaded for textures visible to the camera. And that's what the streaming controller does. I haven't really gone into too much depth of the mid maps, but I will eventually. So I could explain to you guys in better detail what that is. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the rendering section. Uh, let me see how much time we got left. Okay, yeah, I think I'm gonna cut it here. But in the next video, scripts are just all scripts that are imported into your scene. So if you don't have any scripts imported into your scene, you will not have this little tab right here. So I'll go on to the tile map. Uh, the tile map, it's a, a 2D thing. So I'll open up a 2D project and show you uh, what all these are. And then uh, after that, we'll go to UI. Most of the UI are covered, so I'll just uh, glance through this and see what might be something that we need to cover still. I think maybe the mask and the rec mask 2D we got to cover. Selectable. I don't know if I cover the scroll rec, but I'll double check. And that would probably be it for the UI. And then we'll do the video. I'll show you how to play videos. XR. Uh, this is also, this is part of the new input system. This is for XR uh, projects. And then I'll show you how to build your own script your first script, how to, you know, create something real quick. And then after that, uh, we'll probably just go on to either up here, checking all what all these things are. Uh, we'll also go to create and check what all these are, show you how to make a shader, show you um, what playables that I showed in another video. I wasn't exactly able to figure out how to use these. Well, playables are pretty much with the timeline, to, uh, the timeline. And these are just scripts that allow you to um, to manipulate the timeline while it's being played. And uh, there's also Text Mesh Pro if you have it installed. Yeah, all these stuff I'm gonna show you how to do. So, so if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. That way you guys could um, see when I post any videos, uh, any upcoming videos. If you guys want to see something uh, specific, let me know. Uh, there are a couple viewers that have already asked me to make specific videos i will make them as soon as i can if i haven't covered them yet to not get discouraged i will either i haven't made them just because i haven't had time to make them or because it's a little more complicated and it takes a little more time or maybe i just haven't figured it out myself so uh as soon as i do i'll post the videos so don't get discouraged let me know in the comments below like i said you want to see any certain video if you want to see how a certain feature is made or done uh, just let me know i will eventually cover it but there's a lot of cover and um, 
yeah there's a lot of cover so you're just gonna have to give me just a little bit of time so thank you for all the subscribers once again thank you for all the likes i appreciate all the support once again thank you